Um, yeah, so uh, Beer118 is asking for uh, recommendations on on the subreddit uh, for natively installed Steam games. And I, I don't know if he's looking for stuff that's specifically on sale. This is from eight days ago. Um, and I actually recommended... I actually recommended um, Last Epoch and Valheim. And I was wondering what you would recommend somebody that asked you that question. So they're looking for something on mm-hmm. Steam, native Linux install. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Definitely Valheim for me. I mean, even if you didn't say that, that would be the first thing I'd say because yeah. that's so popular right now and it's it's a really good game. I mean, you I, you can play it with people, you can play it without people. I mean, it, it, but it, see, the big problem is, is I don't know anything that this guy likes. You know, yeah. there's so many different genres that who knows, you know, if he doesn't like Valheim, like you, you didn't get really into it. So like, if he's someone like you, then last epoch is the way to go. You know, you did a perfect, you know, one, two right there, you know? Yeah, no, I, I picked, I picked Valheim because I knew how popular it was. I thought it was pretty likely he would like it. I think I'm in the minority as someone that didn't really like it. Um, I could tell it's a good game if, uh, you know, if I had just, maybe I didn't give it enough of a chance. I don't know. Um, well, it's like I said, if I was like 16 or 12 or whatever, I would probably be playing that game all the time now, but I just don't, yeah. I don't have time for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, but I thought maybe we could look through some of these and see if, uh, you see if any of them stick out. Soma is one that I've seen recommended a lot. I didn't realize that there was a, uh, I didn't realize that it had a native Linux install. I thought you'd have to use Proton, but hmm. apparently it does. Um, Soma is a game that uh, I've never played it, so I couldn't give you like a synopsis of the story. But my understanding of what it is is it plays with this whole concept of um, like these robots and AIs, but they're like so close to being human. And like you know, what does it mean to have a soul? And it's like that whole like sci-fi hmm. storyline kind of thing. Oh wow! Um, and supposedly it's really good. I think it's a first-person shooter, but it's like a first-person shooter like puzzle game. Um, so that's one I, I've, I actually have that one on my steam wish list. I should have caught it if it was on sale. Cause it, it usually sends you an email. If you have something on your wish list that goes on sale. Um, right. But it's an older game, so it probably does go on a lot actually. Um, someone else, a lot of people upvoted my, my suggestion, the last epoch, yeah. um, and Valheim. And there was, I was, I knew that a lot of people would like Valheim, but I was worried that last epoch wouldn't get a lot of love. But it did. There was people that jumped in and said it was a really good game from a That's small good. developer team. Um, Factorio. Oh, yeah. Uh, Civilization uh, 6, too, is also a good one for anyone who likes, um, yeah. uh, you know, world builders or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Uh, and there was that new one that just came out, too. Um, turn-based strategy. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Not world builder. Uh, there was a new one. There was a new um, game like that, Civilization Builder. Oh, Surviving Mars. That's another one. Native oh, Linux yeah. Installed that That's, just came out. Yeah. Everyone's been talking about that. Well, I, I say everyone, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard some we, people talking about it. <laughs> we've heard about it a lot because Leo, Leo was really hyped on it. Oh, that's right. So we heard yeah, about yeah, it in, yeah. the, in the Discord. Um, yeah, that's another, that's another really good one. Um, oh, XCOM 2, that's another one that's Linux native. Yeah. That's a, that's a uh, turn-based strategy. There was a time but, period where there was a time period where whenever a game would go Linux native, like it originally came out for Xbox right. and PC, uh, you know, Windows, and then they they someone picked it up and then put out a, a Linux port of it or something, that would be like OMG Ubuntu would be like <laughs> <laughs> like that would be like yeah. headline news. Like that Jumping would be like right on it. Yeah. yeah, huge in the Linux world. Where now it's like I don't even know. There's just so many titles out there. They're just natively, you know. Oh, Rome, Rome, Total War remastered mm. is is native Linux now. Dude, Interesting. It's crazy. it's crazy. The world we live in today compared to even five or six years ago. It's crazy. Oh yeah. It's crazy. It's nuts.
Welcome to Crowbar Kernel Panic, the podcast at the intersection of Linux and gaming. This is episode nine. It's actually the last half of the last episode. So we did one episode where we talked about Fedora in the beginning, and then we did E3 announcements and Linux and gaming news, and we rounded out the show. We decided to split that into two episodes. This was a great idea, but the problem was is I went on vacation between releasing the two episodes, and I have not been home to edit the second half and post it. And so at this point, almost two weeks have passed, and these these news items are going to feel a little dated. I apologize. Uh, we're coming in next week to do Ubuntu for gaming, and it'll be a nice comparison. Since we just did Fedora, we'll do Ubuntu, uh, two juggernauts of the Linux desktop world. Um, and comparing them, I'll try to do the same comparisons um, that I did for Fedora on Ubuntu. But anyway, stay tuned for that next week. For now, check out these news items. I apologize, they're a week and a half old at this point, but I hope you enjoy. Um, so we had E3 this week. Um, yep. I didn't watch any of it. I barely. I didn't knew what was really going watch on. any of it, but I've been kind of keeping my finger on the pulse thing yeah and uh yeah it's it was interesting it was definitely different than than other years Hmm. Uh, especially the biggest thing that really rocked me was that now now um uh bethesda is owned by microsoft and that kind of like jarred me because i wasn't ready for that and i was like oh oh yeah that's right oh crap this could be bad (laughs) Or it could be good. I don't know. Yeah. I still don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, The Elder Scrolls, the Bethesda Elder Scrolls announcement was probably the biggest the biggest thing that I know that we're both excited about. Um, a new Elder Scrolls game. Um, And I kind of just jotted down a few things that I that I thought yeah. that I thought was interesting. Um, And also that I thought there's a possibility that it could not only come out for PC, but also um, but be playable on Linux in some way. Um, so one yeah. one thing was uh, a Plague Tale. Have you heard of a Plague Tale? No, I have not. This I actually haven't played a, a Plague Tale, but this is one I probably should pick up and and play uh, for the podcast. Um, it's uh, I, I've 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 heard a lot about it, but I've never played it. But it's it's a uh, very unique game in that you're using it. so it takes place like during like the Black Plague, and hmm. the city's like overrun overrun by uh, rats, and the main character is trying to save like a child I think, um, just based on all the footage I've seen, and you have to use light and fire and all these different things to like guide right. through the city to get away from this like swarm hmm. of of like plague infested rats. Um, and it's just a really unique style of game. Like, uh, you know, just, you know, it's just one of these like hugely like outside of the box, just like art pieces. Um, and, right. uh, this is the sequel that they announced at, at E3, uh, Requiem. So, um, I'll check out to see, to see, uh, if we can pick up, I wonder what, I wonder, I've never actually checked it like on like Proton DB or anything. A Plague Tale. Yeah, it has a gold rating. A Plague Tale Innocence. And then Requiem is the one that's coming out. But yeah, Innocence has okay. a gold rating, so it should be hmm. pretty good. Um, there's like one person here saying that the game wouldn't work for them, but there's a few people, one or two people, but for the most part, they're yeah, all Yeah, there's people say out of the way. box it works. Yeah, so I think, but those people that say out of the box it works doesn't don't have a just says Proton five dot thirteen doesn't say what this yeah. show they're on or anything. I, 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 I would I would I would dare say not Fedora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Um, yeah, I don't see a single. Oh no, I do see a. Fedora. Oh really? Oh, a, oh man. Uh, six months ago, Fedora thirty three. Oh. Yep. Um, it runs fine at. 1080p with highest settings. All right, that's there pretty we good. Go. That's F- pretty official. Good. It runs on Fedora. Yeah. Official. No. Yeah. All right, <laughs> it's official. It's official. Uh, um, so yeah, that's the that game. That's a game I want to play, and I'm excited to see their sequel. Um, 
There's also a game I saw showcase called Starfield. Did you see Starfield? Yes, I've been following Starfield since the beginning. Oh, I'm glad to because, hear that. Yeah, because like I'm, I, well, my wife and I are both huge um, Elder Scrolls fans, and Bethesda. Actually, Todd Howard said that this is going to be Skyrim in space. Yeah, that's, that's what he said. That's his exact words. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't know how I feel about it yet because Skyrim has this has this you know you expect it to be old. Mm-hmm. And now you're going to be thrown into this like futuristic world, and where you po- you're possibly planet hopping, which is going to be pretty awesome. Yeah. Um. Actually, I think that's official now. I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I. Uh, yeah, I want to say they said that. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they right. said that. Um. But it, yeah, I'm I'm kind of hyped about it. I don't know. I, I just and they said it's a console exclusive, so. <laughs> They oh, did say that man, an Xbox exclusive. That. Oh, but I didn't catch I, I, that. I don't. I don't know if that means for for PC and Xbox because Microsoft has been doing that. A lot of times or, they do that, but yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that's what they mean. I don't know if it says I don't exclusive. Know. I don't know. This is the kind of thing that I was worried about with Microsoft and Bethesda. I was just like, yes, it's a good cash injection, but at the same time, they're going to be doing this crap. Man. I That's have to right. look that up because I, I didn't really d- dive into that part because I was kind of so bummed. <laughs> I didn't we'll really get a, want to look. We'll just get somebody to make an Elder Scrolls mod so that the the new Elder Scrolls game we can mod it to look like it's in the future oh, in space, dude. Dude, <laughs> th- they're, this new Elder Scrolls game they're gonna have to put out all the stops because freaking Skyrim when you mod yeah. it correctly looks amazing. <laughs> it's ridiculous what they do with this freaking uh, what is it nine-year-old or a ten-year-old game <laughs> we should do we should do an episode on skyrim mods um because i have yet to try any i watch them on youtube but i've never you actually tried never, one you've never modded skyrim. Mm, no 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 i've never Dude, modded skyrim i've just out, played man. vanilla skyrim and i've i've watched them on youtube i'm aware of that world but i've never <laughs> dipped my toe in it <laughs> oh man you're missing out it's so fun it's, yeah. it's uh, modding skyrim is is like me trying to play games on linux i mod it and I look at it, and it's pretty, and then I don't play it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just satisfied with the mods working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I would love to do that sometime. We do a whole episode where we just try out mods and review them. Um, I do have to say the modding Skyrim on Linux is vastly harder than modding Skyrim on Windows. Okay. Because the tools are all Windows specific. Yeah. And you have to install them with Wine and get them working first, and then you can start to mod Skyrim. Okay. Well, so I'll, that's a big hurdle. I'll try to look into. It. I'll do some research. Maybe, uh, maybe it's something we could do. Maybe it's too hard. I don't know. We'll look into it. It's pretty hard because I've, I, I've reverted back to playing Skyrim on Windows because of that reason. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we could try it though i can try it again because i've learned a lot in the past couple of months about modding skyrim and and there's multiple different things you can do to uh help with that on linux that i didn't realize before so we, we can definitely try it all right all right um did you see um project ferocious project ferocious uh project Ferocious. let me see here i don't believe so i never heard of it until until the E3 announcement. And I actually only saw it in like a recap of announcements. Um, but it it's on steam. It's um, it, it has a TBA for planned release date. They're not even sure when it's going to be ready. And my understanding is this is like a one man development team. Um, hmm. There's one developer working on this and I don't understand how that, I don't understand how that is because the game looks amazing. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is like almost uh, no. I'm gonna say this is triple A style. Like, yeah, it it graphics. has it has to be that he is not creating all of these assets. He's right licensing using them. I'm guessing. Um, I I have no idea. But look at that water, man. Yeah, that that's triple A water right there. <laughs> 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 that's some Dasani right there. <laughs> that's vitamin water, son. Um, <laughs> so, but the game is like a like a mysterious island kind of thing. So, like you, like I don't know if you're shipwrecked or how you end up on this island, but huh. you 
you end up on this Dude, island. There's dinosaurs. What? Yeah, there's dinosaurs. That's what. That's oh, what. I'm gonna that's have what, to get this game. Yeah, that's what made <gasps> this stick out in my mind because you and I were this just talking like about Dino, Dino Crisis. Crisis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that's why it stuck out in my mind was because we had oh, just talked about Dino Crisis. Crisis. Unless this thing flops, I'm getting it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it'll come out. I think it'll come out. I mean, if they got an E3 announcement, I'm actually adding it to my wish list right now. Oh yeah, good call. Good call. I'm gonna do that too. Oh um, ah, crap, I'm on signed in. Uh let's see here. So that so that one was pretty exciting. Um another game that I think looks cool, although I probably won't play, um, because it's probably way too intense for me, but is Elden Ring. Um YouTube thinks that I would be into this because they they will not stop showing me videos about <laughs> Elden Ring. And I keep clicking on them because the game is beautiful. Um, in a very grim, dark kind of way, but it's a it's a very good looking game. Um, but it looks like Dark Souls, and it looks like it's probably as hard as Dark Souls. And so I don't know that <laughs> this game is for me. Um, I don't want to buy a new keyboard or monitor or any equipment that I might break trying to uh, <laughs> trying to rage <laughs> on this game. Um, but it looks but it looks amazing. Uh, I'll probably watch YouTube videos of it, even though I may I may not actually play it myself. Wow, it looks really good. <laughs> yeah, it, it, like the look of it. I mean, yeah, yeah, it looks good. It looks like it looks like something I would have loved whenever I was I was younger. Um, but I would have gotten so pissed off at it. Um, yeah, <laughs> the thing that everybody's talking about that I've seen the most from E3, as far as like uh, on YouTube and places, is Avatar: Frontiers of Pandora. <laughs> I know. I'm like, we, yeah. Okay, so we need an Avatar game. Where the hell did this come from? I where don't did, know. Where did I've never heard of them even ex, uh, even going into an Avatar game? Like, no, even I never talking even talking about it. I never and all even of a sudden thought it's here. about it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this movie came out like ten years ago or something. Yeah. Like, when did? Although it does look pretty darn good for being ten years old, I have to say that. Uh, yeah. The, <laughs> so, I am I am not into Avatar. I didn't I didn't think the movie was amazing. It didn't what? win me over. Yeah. I don't. I I saw Dude. it. I didn't. I I was whelmed. I was not <laughs> overwhelmed. I was not underwhelmed. I was just I was like whelmed. I was just like that was a movie, a great popcorn. You know, like uh, I, I just wasn't. I just, I just didn't all right. get bought in. Whatever. And, and then there was supposed <laughs> to be like six more movies, and they never, they never. Oh yeah, I know. They that never whole did thing another was one. So stupid. And then just I out of nowhere, out of nowhere, there's a triple A game title on it, <laughs> and the game actually looks really good. Actually, like the like the look of the game looks yeah. really really good. Like. The the game the graphics of the game looks better than anything I think they can do on consoles. I don't even understand how this game is coming out on consoles because the game looks amazing. Well, maybe it's the new generation because actually it has Star- to be. Yeah, I, I think Starfield also is only coming it's, out on the new consoles. It's not coming out on the Xbox yeah. or PlayStation Four. Oh, and, uh, never mind, PlayStation. <laughs> but yeah, PlayStation is ousted on that one. But yeah. uh <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, um, yeah. So. I, I I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence. The game looks so good. To me, they have to do this right or else yeah. it's going to flop because Oh, it's going to flop so hard. It's going to flop so I, I hard. Know. <laughs> I know. I feel like it's going to flop so hard. I I mean, like uh, uh, they have to do it absolutely perfectly for this thing not to flop. <laughs> I just I think just like the movie, I just don't I don't know. I I must be completely wrong. Uh, I just you know, <laughs> everyone likes different stuff. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. But I'm just thinking about it from a, you know, I'm not a fan of Harry Potter, but I understand why there's such a huge fan base for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I like the movies. I like the Harry Potter movies, but I'm not like, oh my gosh, Harry Potter is the end all be all movie, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) but I get, but I get, I don't know, I kind of get why. You get the hype behind it, like the why people follow it. It's, you know. I never got into, this is a whole other conversation, but like I never got into (laughs) Harry Potter because I was so into Lord of the Rings. And it just, it irked me that I would be like, people would be like, oh man, have you seen a new Harry Potter? And I'm like, no, Fellowship of the Ring. I'm like, like, you don't talk to me until you've watched Fellowship of the Ring. (laughs) And then they come back to you and they're like, but it's three hours. 
I felt like I had to choose a side. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, it's oh, like Fedora yeah. and Ubuntu, right? Like I. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just I don't I don't, you know, it's breakfast at Taco Bell. Nobody asked for it. <laughs> it's there. Yep. And we have it now. That's the the avatar <laughs> game. Nobody asked yep. for it. It's it's there. We have it now. Um. So you know what this reminds me of? So. There's a game called Aliens Colonial Marines, mm. and it was an, a game based on the movie Alien. Yeah. And there's that, a... I got behind the hype of that game, and I bought it pre, um, what is that, um, not pre-sale, um, uh, I can't think of the name of that, what is it called when there, when it comes out, but you, you buy it before it's released? Uh, the, uh, uh, you bought it, the, uh pre-release um yeah the pre-release whatever there's yeah. a name for it but anyway um, early access early access yes yeah. that's what i got i got the early access and the game is total garbage i mean it is it is horrible <laughs> the xenomorphs freaking like spaz out and freaking they attack your other player mm. the other xenomorphs and you shoot them and they freaking fly into the sky and they never fixed it and that's the game that ruined early access for me. That's why I haven't really ever bought an early access game since. And this I, one is I'm getting the vibes of that right now. <laughs> I uh so so Colonial Marines, I'm looking at it now. I re- I vaguely remember this, but the alien game that everybody says is really good is Alien Isolation. Isolation is is a night and day from Colonial Marines. I mean, oh yeah, it's a very it's a very different game. I think the Isolation fits the movie more. Oh, definitely, Isolation was perfect. Yeah, like I I never actually played it, but I've I've watched gameplay of it, and it's it's perfect. So uh, so going back to Avatar, like I don't know. I doubt it'll if it does come out. I don't know if there's a. I just I doubt it'll ever be playable on Linux unless it's um going to come out on Steam. Yeah. I don't see how, and I'm not interested in it to be completely honest with you. Um, yeah, I'm not really interested either. I mean, I like the movie, but I'm like, just like most movies, they don't need a game. No, nah, but but the thing the the only reason why I added it to our list here was just to talk about how good like it actually looks really good. Just the look of yeah. it. The potential but, is there, but they yeah. just need to do it. <laughs> but but all we saw, I don't know that we saw any. Uh, I had to go back and watch the trailer, but I don't think there's actually any gameplay footage in the trailer. Or maybe there is, but it's all like just cinematic shot. The 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 part that gets you hyped in in that trailer is just like, oh look how graphically good everything looks. I well, don't know what the gameplay shot, is like. All I can say is these screenshots that I'm seeing, not the not the video, but the screenshots mm. look worse than the movie. And I don't know how, like what I'm saying is what I, what I mean by that is, is I don't think it's a cinematic in these, these screenshots on, um, I'm looking on tech radar right now hmm. and I don't think it's the, I don't think they're cinematics because they look worse than what the movie looked 10 years ago. So I'm thinking that this is, um, game. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I'm, I've not, I, I haven't looked at that. So maybe it's like, I would assume cinematic now yeah, would look yeah. better or equal to the movie yeah i see what you're and saying this, i can see like i can always tell when it's when it's gameplay screenshots because just there's just this look oh yeah you, you can just yeah. tell that it's not it's not cinematic yeah it's like in old final fantasy games where they'd have these like awesome yep. cinematics yep. so that you get the little <laughs> sprite it's like wait <laughs> well hold on a minute <laughs> all right let's do some yeah. news and then get out of here um. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm most excited for for me three. Um, probably the new Elder Scrolls and a Playtale Requiem. Oh, speaking of that, I, I actually brought. I uh, looked up something quick. Um, they a lot of people are saying that there was a hint to where the next Elder Scrolls game is going to be in the Starfield trailer with a little tiny scribble on one of the consoles. Uh, like on the metal part of the console mm. of one of these screens. And you can see when they zoom in, it looks like High Rock hmm. on the Elder Scrolls High, uh, where High Rock is. And the little scribble looks like it. It's so funny. And I just found this. Does but it, I'm like, we we pretty much know that that's where it's going to be. Yeah. 
we, we we've known that for a while but this is like confirmation they're saying like this has got to be that's pretty it. awesome i love that so. kind of stuff now <laughs> it's so small i don't know how many how anybody <laughs> caught this but it is like a little <laughs> tiny scribble under a screw that's in a in the metal part of a of a screen like uh, inside yeah. of a monitor <laughs> people just go back and rewatch these videos like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> scanning Show every. Some. Some. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um. So, Albion Online released a mobile version uh, this week or last hey, week. Hey, another mobile game. Yeah, I tried it out. <laughs> have you Have you looked at it? Have you looked no. at it at all? No, I tried it out. I mean, it's it looks exactly like it does on the PC. It's, it's just only like on mobile. Yeah. Mobile version. <laughs> um, Here's the thing. It sparked me to play Albion again. So the reason why I was playing it this week basically was because this mobile version came out. Only I did, I'm not playing it on mobile. I launched it on mobile and said, oh, yeah, it works. And then I closed it and opened it on my <laughs> PC. <laughs> but That's it, how I feel about mobile for the most part. <laughs> I just, you know, that game so... I didn't think about that. They've always said they were going to do mobile. Even back in, even back in their like early launch days, they said this is going to be available on everything. We want it to be available on Windows, Mac, I mean, it makes sense. Linux, um, and we want it to be available on Android and iOS. Yeah, they they want it to be available on everything. Um, yeah, a game like that it makes total sense to yeah. go full on with all the market. Well, here's the thing I was thinking about though is, and I never thought about this until I actually saw it on a tablet, and then I just thought about how how difficult would it be to PvP on a tablet versus a player on a PC. I feel like the player on the oh, PC yeah. is at such like such a that's great advantage. Same, that's the same thing with Fortnite. Like I don't know how these people play on their cell phones with Fortnite against these other people who are playing on PC. Now now how does that work? Do, if you if you're playing I don't know how this works. I'm I'm really asking the question. I don't know so either actually. If, I don't I just know I just know people are I, I people who I know who have played Fortnite constantly complain about dying from people who are playing on PC because they're so much more accurate and better than on the phone, but they don't have a PC to play it on, so they play it on their phone. They're just like rage quitting. That's pretty it. crazy. I thought that yeah. I thought that if you were playing it on a phone, you're playing against other people on a phone. And if you're playing on I, PC, I don't know. You're playing I mean, maybe that is how it is, and these people are just really bad. <laughs> just, <laughs> just complaining about it. No, but, uh, I, I've always heard people complain like, "Oh, that freaking stupid PC player killed me." You know, <laughs> I don't like, know. Okay, I don't. I don't know. I've thought about this before, but I've never looked it up to see to see which is. Yeah, accurate. I never. I've never actually researched it. To and I've see never if it actually is. I've never wanted to play Fortnite, so I don't. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> I, I had no. I had never. I never even thought about it. Like even when it was hyped, yeah. I was like, nope. I uh, I was sitting at, at Dragon Con uh, uh, pre-COVID, obviously. I think it was probably the 2018 Dragon Con. And I was sitting beside a guy. We didn't know each other. We just were crammed into like a big conference room and they, there was no empty seats kind of deal, right? So I'm sitting beside this dude I don't know. And my wife is talking about, she's a school teacher and she's talking about how her kids are like obsessed with Fortnite. And I, I told her, I was like, do you think like Fortnite is going to like, st- like, like, is it going to like, is it going to pass the test of time? You know what I mean? Like, like 10, 15 years from now, are people like kids today are going to be like in their twenties still playing Fortnite? Like Halo. Yeah. Will it be like Halo or World of Warcraft or something like where it's like around, you know, forever. And I was kind of saying it like really dismissive. And then the guy sitting beside me that I don't know, he was like, I still play Counter-Strike. And I was like. Yeah, me too. Good point. <laughs> I was like, That's yeah, great. I guess I guess you're right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't I don't see how they do the cross tablet versus I I, I think I think it may be more balanced for Albion than it is for um Oh yeah, for, something for like anything Fortnite. that yeah. that's yeah, that's like an RP uh yeah. Uh, RTA, uh, you know uh FPS. <laughs> Yeah, right. For an FPS, it would be much harder to uh, to do the cross platform thing. Um, I put it in the show. I know notes. console players constantly complain about that with with uh, cross platform. Uh, yeah, uh, first person shooters like it's like freaking aim bots and all this crap. <laughs> the consoles guys like dying every five seconds. Well, I know, <laughs> I know, in a lot of first person shooters like 
they used to not have them on the same servers. They used to be separate. No, servers. they never used to be like that. And now yeah. all of a sudden, all this cross play has been going on. And then, and then PlayStation got into it so that they, they can all cross play. And yeah. So yeah, it's been kind of a mess as far as that goes, I think. Yeah. Um, I have a link in the show notes, um, to this. The link is actually going to uh gaming on Linux.com where they have taken, and made a list of all the Linux compatible, all the Linux native games that are part of the Steam, um, the Steam Next Fest. Which uh, I'm going to try to get this episode out on Monday or b- by Monday. I'll try to do it tomorrow, um, so that way this will be released before the end of the festival because it ends on Tuesday. Um, so if you're if you're hearing this on Monday or Tuesday, then go to steam and check out this uh, virtual festival. And, mm. um, this, uh, this article I've linked to has a list of some of the, uh, some of the Linux native games. I, I like these festival things that steam does because I have discovered game. I mean, that's the purpose of it, but I have discovered games. Uh, that's how I came across, uh, uh, Graven, um, which I'm, I'm loving by the way, I'm pretty far into Graven. It's in early access, but, um, I've been, I've been playing it. I've actually been playing it so much that I kind of want to stream it and I don't want to get too far in the game because I want to stream it from the beginning. So I kind of want to start over. Um, but yeah, I found it on one of these type of festivals. I don't recognize any of the games in this, in this list that they have pointed yeah. out here. Um, yeah, I, uh, I actually didn't even know about the, these festivals. I actually had no idea. Like I've never, I never really paid attention to them until we started doing the podcast. And huh. then, and then I was like, Oh, well, because sometimes they do free demos. Yeah. I, I don't think all these games have free demos. Maybe some of right. them do. Um, but uh, a lot of times they do have free demos during the little festival event. And right. um, I just saw it as a good way to, oh, I can try them out, you know, from the perspective of a Linux gamer. And then we can kind of, you know, report on like, well, I tried this game and it, and it worked through Proton. Or I tried right, this one yeah. and it didn't without having to buy a whole bunch of games, you know. Right, right. Um. So yeah, definitely check that out. Um, retailers are limiting graphics cards purchases. Um, so this, I think this was probably already going on, but uh, yeah, some, well, this should have been going on from the beginning so yeah. everyone can get their <laughs> graphics card. But whatever. But uh, the reason why there's recent articles about it is because Micro Center has been putting out uh, signs out in front of their uh, out in front of their building that basically says like. One per customer every thirty days. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, every thirty days! Wow. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't just go in and buy one and leave and come back and buy one and then you gotta every yeah. every thirty days one. They're somehow tracking this. Um, they're gonna they're gonna limit you um, to try to try to help with the shortage. Good news is it seems like it's actually it seems like it's getting better. It's still bad, yeah. But things, it seems like yeah, it's getting better. It's bad, but it's definitely starting. The, the it's the first steps to getting back to normal. I think. Yeah. Just recently. This reminds me of the lady with the iPhones. iPhones are limited one per per person. And yeah. there's, there's always the people that like buy their they buy their way to the front of the line because they think they're going to buy out all <laughs> the iPhones and they only let them buy one. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think Newegg's still doing their um, uh, what do they call it? The Newegg Shuffle, or whatever. Oh, what's the Newegg to, uh, Shuffle? Uh, I think I think you gotta go in, uh, sign up for it, and then you'll get emailed if you're chosen to get a graphics card. That's pretty cool. That's yeah, pretty but cool. it's like it's like you're raffling off the the yeah. privilege to buy to a buy graphics it. card. Yeah. yeah, do they charge anything <laughs> to get put in the shuffle, or is it... I don't think so. I think you can just buy it regular huh. retail price. You know, so it's a lottery to to see if you get. Yeah, the, that's uh... basically what it is. I never actually tried it because I, if I got it, I probably wouldn't be able to afford the graphics card anyway yeah, right no. now. Yeah, right. So I'm like, I'm not buying I'm like, one I, right now. I didn't even go into it. Yeah, yeah, no, whatever. So I I also put a link in the show notes to this is the pricing may versus june so this is by techspot.com mm. they've tracked the pricing of gtx rtx 390 380 ti 380 370 yada, 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 yada. um and they they mark the price in may and then the price in june and then they've even given us like a percentage and how it's changed um oh, wow. and so the 
the RTX 390, um, which is wow. $1,500 for a, a 390. <laughs> um, that's the MSRP. The eBay average in March was $3,000. And then in May, it was thirty six twenty eight. So it would have cost you nearly four grand to buy one graphics card on eBay. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, oh God. Um, but that has dropped in June by four percent to only to, to a mere <laughs> two thousand nine hundred dollars. Oh my gosh. That is so wild. Oh, man. This this whole experience has reminded me so much of the cell phones and how they used to be like four hundred three hundred dollars for the top of the line phone and then all of a sudden it was like a thousand dollars out of nowhere and you're like what (laughs) yeah no phones are like it's a deal if you go into 600 bucks these days oh yeah yeah i haven't even upgraded my phone well i actually i i got a three-year-old phone brand new last year well no two years ago now because i just wasn't gonna pay i wasn't going to pay eight nine hundred dollars for a new phone so yeah (laughs) it's like it's it's nuts but it's the same way with the graphics cards you know like i I still i'm still so glad that i at least bought the one i have now when me too you could actually get them because if i would have if i would have waited and i wouldn't have bought it i I would still be on a gtx 780 right now Mm -hmm. and getting 30 frames per second on witcher 3 Mm -hmm. (laughs) at like not even maximum graphics yeah, you know what's hilarious is I can't remember where I saw this. It was either a YouTube video I was listening to or it was an article I read. I think it might have been a TechSpot article um, I was reading, and they were saying even relatively old graphics cards like a GTX 1060, uh, da, 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 da. and I was like, that's my graphics card. What do you call it? Relatively <laughs> oh, I old. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. Like relatively one year later, old. it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> old. But yeah, I'm glad I got it. I got it uh, probably four years ago now, I guess. I don't know. Um, but I'm glad I got it when I did because, yeah, we, I'd really be stuck. Yeah. Well, I literally bought mine in, at the end of 2019. Mm. So like like I said, if I would have waited like two months, I'd have been screwed. <laughs> yeah. I was going to get a Radeon card because uh, Leo got a new Radeon card. Yeah. And I was gonna That's what get, I really want to do Yeah. my next graphics card. I, yeah, me too. Me too. This is probably my last NVIDIA card. Um, and I wanted to get the same one he got. And and then I didn't do it. And that was like, that was just before right. all of this the stuff. The whole thing. Yeah. Yep. The event, as people call it. <laughs> the event. Um, so uh, Proton uh, 6.3-5 RC allows more Windows game to run, more Windows games to run on Linux. Um, there was a, a new protein, no new proton update, um, and <laughs> and they added more games to the like officially supported list. So you know how we run all these games on proton, and it's kind of like at your own risk kind of thing. But they do have right. a master list of like these are all the good games, yep. right? Um, I thought it was pretty interesting because we've talked about some of these games recently. Um, they recently added Resident Evil Two. Resident Evil 3. So they added Ooh, both cool, of those. Cool. We just talked about them. Um, Not Resident Evil 1, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been so mad if I spent all this time doing all that <laughs> to get it to work. And then they do this. I'd be like, what? No. Come on. It would have turned out that it was just like the you got the newer version of Proton when you went on Fedora. And that's why it's working. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, they added Team Sonic Racing, Metal Gear Solid 5, which... Metal Gear Solid Five. Um, I actually have not played Metal Gear Solid Five all the way through. I played it, and there's a point where you're kind of like at the end of the game, but not really yet. I I played it to there, and then I I kind of lost interest and stopped playing because it's very different than previous Metal Gears. Mm. Um, but I may I may jump back in and try to finish it out. Um, the Medium, Deep Rock Galactic, and Bloodstained. Um, they also released several fixes for a lot of other existing games. Um, and uh, this is bettering support for Direct 3D, 9, 10, and 11. A um, lot, of, lot of good improvements. Um, so I see, I see they mentioned Cyberpunk 2077. Do you even hear about that anymore? No, I had never heard about that game. Like yeah. it, it, once they had all the problems, it just died. 
Yeah, dude. It yeah, just died. yeah that, that was like a real flash in the pan because people were waiting on it to come out for so oh, long. It was all they talked about before yeah. it came out. That's it. That's oh, every gaming place. Oh, Cyberpunk's doing this. Oh, Cyberpunk's mm-hmm. delayed. Oh, Cyberpunk's delayed again. And then it comes out and Cyberpunk's horrible and then nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, one of the best, uh, there was, I can't remember what it was like. I can't remember how this came to be, but there was a comment one time where they were talking about the release of Cyberpunk 2077, and, and there was someone that said, this game was announced. I was like a freshman in college. I graduated <laughs> college. I met a girl and got married. We had a kid. <laughs> I got a job, and now it's finally being released. <laughs> <laughs> like this guy basically lived like an entire you know like he, <laughs> he started his adult his life. life yeah like <laughs> waiting on this game to be released that's funny um, um but uh and then yeah now now no one hardly anybody talks about it all right well i think that's a wrap i think that's a good show i think we did pretty yep. good it was a yep. pretty good episode um so, oh, well, yeah, I haven't been keeping track of the time, so... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was wondering if we had enough to break it into two. I, I might try to. I don't know if we will or not. Uh, maybe break the E3 and the news into one and the fedora and the other. Um, yeah, I mean, if you got enough time, go yeah. right ahead. Uh, but, yeah, so I guess if you're hearing this outro and it's right after the fedora segment, stay tuned next week. we got a whole other episode. <laughs> 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 maybe not. Maybe it's all one. But um, But, yeah, so I think for now... I'm leaving for door. I'm not planning on wiping and I'm going to stick with it until I run into some problem yep. that I can't yep. solve. I still have some testing to do, so I'm definitely sticking with it. And I'll be honest with you. I don't know what to go to next. Like I'm such a distro hopper. I love trying out different distros. I know me too. But it's I don't so know. Bad. Nothing is exciting me right now. Like that. I just have to jump to and try out. I don't, I don't know what I would try. So I'll give Fedora a shot until something sparks my interest, I guess. Yep. And uh, and and judging based on my previous my previous opinions of Fedora, that's a huge improvement. Like the the fact yeah. that I'm willing to stay on it, I th- I feel like Fedora 34 is a really good release. Yeah, um, it really is. Oh well, I guess we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Peace. Peace.